y'all. I'm saying, I, I think it's important that we don't judge before we get to meet people yeah. based on hearsay and what one cast member yeah. is giving you and based on a small clip. Yeah. Your energy is lighting up this room right thank you. now. Thank you. I, I, thank you, number one, for taking this interview, but I have to give you your flowers as mm -hmm. a black woman. Thank you. And coming with so many accolades, your energy is just so good. I appreciate that. Yes. You know, I'm pretty likable, honestly, outside yes. of this situation. Like, I'm shocked because I was, ex I don't know what I was expecting. Oh, no. I'm not, I'm not saying being that I'm being made to be. I'm really yes. not. And people that really know me, they're like, they're really shocked how this is all coming out because they're like, what? Listen. <laughs> hey, Trendies. I had the pleasure of watching Queen She was interviewed with Sunny last night. Some points I would like to make are that I wish Sunny had done this interview first and come out this way before there was any other way that we knew her publicly. Overall, this is where, like I said, I defaulted to I wanted to like Sunny and this interview does make me like her more. I will say that. And that's okay because I'm human. She's human. We are complex beings. But I will say that Queen Sheba brought out the best in Sunny. And then of course, because Sunny is a complex being, there are things that she already had in her that, of course, we didn't know until the interview. And some things we knew if we did our own research and that was able to be brought to a more public light, which is really good. One thing that I will say shocked me the most, and it, it still will probably be in the highlights, is that Sunny thought that Carlos would or his production would bring out and let her actually speak about their businesses and unfortunately for all the years the show has been out that's the thing he is not about your black excellence or your businesses that will be on the back burner and tamped down most likely so i was shocked that that still was an expectation um, I will qualify with saying that she was out there doing her own thing and said she didn't really watch the show and then until she actually worked for the show. And when she worked for the show, she only focused on producing and getting out the best scenes she could get or not really looking at what social media's reaction was to it. So there, there is that. I had to come back and say one other thing. Although the title has Why Destiny can't seem to let go. Let me be clear. In my opinion, it was not majority about Destiny. There were many questions asked that did not uh, pertain to Destiny, but because the overall light is on the fact of the connection of Sunny and Destiny, Destiny is in there. And also because of some things that Destiny strongly claims, her name is in there. And I would like to remind everybody that this is the same destiny that tried to imply that Melody was just alone with LeBaric. And then Dustin had to ask a clarifying question, were the children there? And then she had to explain more of the setting when she actually saw LeBaric and then Melody, I believe, in the background. So keep that in mind that I understand why Sonny had to ask basically like, um, almost like counter defense, counter attack question. So Destiny will be a part of this video and this interview, but there was so much more to learn about Sunny if you did not do your own research. So keep that in mind as well as you watch Queen Sheba's full interview with Sunny Minx. Um, I hope that sheds a little bit light because some people may judge the whole interview based off of the title and not actually watch the full interview. So make sure you watch from beginning to end. I am so pleased with the interview that Sunny did with Queen Sheba. Of course, the link will be in the description box to watch the whole interview. And let's get into these highlights. The title Puppet Master came back up. Sunny said, usually the one in front of the camera is the one that gets played the most. Oh, it's, you know. How did that transition happen from going behind the lens to in front of the camera? Well, you know, I've always been a person that could could have been in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. I My history starts back from music. I did music. I was a model. I did so many different things um, before I became a producer. But for me, I'm more of a creative. So I was like, that's where I want. That's yeah. the power, creating the show, making it. Um, the face is cool, but I know that it's usually the ones that get played the most. Oh, hold on. Walk us through that because we got a lot of women <laughs> tuned in. Talk about that. Yeah, no, honestly, because I've, I've studied this industry for a long time. And usually the artist, the one in front of the camera, is usually the one that's on the most streams. You know what I'm saying? They're the ones. Puppet mouse. Yeah, the puppet mouse. They're the ones who get the least, uh, they usually make the least amount of money when it comes to the whole show in totality. As far as the executives and the people behind the scenes, you know, they're the ones who get the most uh, criticism, right? 
Yeah. You're judging them like a book. So it's like, mm, girl, yeah, I'll just go ahead and create the show. Yeah. You can be the star. We thought we were going to be able to show that we do business. We do real estate. We do trucking. We do all these great things. And none of that. And we have yet to be able to talk about that. And it's just like, oh, okay. I'm just going to fight with you this whole time. Like, no, girl. girl. I I don't have girl fights like that. It reminds, okay. I, and I don't mean to do this. It reminds me of what Melanie kind of said she sold on the show. Maybe real estate. I wait. We mm-hmm. have to see that. So hold on. You say y'all do trucking. That's not the one. Yes. What else did you say? Y'all real do? estate. Real estate. Yeah. Like. I'm a real estate investor and so is my husband. Have you filmed any of that yet as a part of Black Excellence and Love and Marriage? No. I call it the bottom. How yeah. she started and hands on. No, and I got it out the mud. You can say the bottom because the bottom. It, it was what it is what it is. You yes. know, I had my own crew. I had 10 full-time employees. Okay. Working for me. Like I helped build things around this city. The legendary John Singleton was Sonny's mentor. Before he passed, she was set to work on Snowfall. One one thing I heard, I hate to say it, I heard it from Destiny, is she was fired. And it kind of wiped out your entire resume. Like yeah. I said, the introduction to Love and Mary Tunsil. We didn't know that you were manifesting. Yeah. We didn't know that you picked up and went to L.A. to make shit happen. Pretty we much. didn't know that you worked with somebody that worked with Martin Lawrence. Yeah. We didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know, B.T., Fast forward, love and marriage, Huntsville. Yeah. Girl. Oh, and then also John Singleton was my mentor. Same thing happened with John Singleton. A buddy of mine knew John Singleton. Um, actually, my good friend Greg, who managed Tyrese, um, introduced me to John Singleton. And so John Singleton, and this is when he just started Snowfall. He was my mentor. Wow. Right when he passed, I was supposed to be working on Snowfall. He, he had went on a vacation. This is when he had his heart attack. And he came, he never came back. Yeah. Sunny clears up the rumor of if she was fired from Love and Marriage Huntsville. Listen, real quick, I want you to clear up the rumor that mm-hmm. you were fired on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Nobody has cleared that up. Destiny yeah. came out, she said it. Carlos has yet to say anything. I'm absolutely not fired. Okay. Um <laughs> I do not think she's saying that. I think at this point, um, I think it's all about attention. I think it's all about trying to win the audience over now. I feel like this is her chance to get back okay. in the good graces of the people whom she lost and she was actually let go. Mm. I think this is like her moment to say, yes, yeah, I'm getting it's, it's giving her some type of thrill, I believe, um, because she knows that's not true. Like I was literally the only producer that stayed around the longest. I was called back. We do pickup shots. So we'll come back in and fill up shots that we missed or we'll come okay. back and do interviews to fill in while the team is editing certain things. I was the producer they called back every single time. Nobody else. It would just be one producer. Okay. So I was the only producer on set at those times. Like, because I was in such good graces of everybody around me. Like, the crew loved me, everybody. So, yeah. Um, I was never fired. I finished my whole term. I worked for that show for 10 months. I was actually about to work this time. They asked me to come back. Sonny's father was a functioning addict. And he's now been sober for 20 years. And to ensure his well-being, she stayed in the boarding house with him. Yeah. I've heard you talk about your father before. Yeah. Uh, how important has he been in your life? I'm a daddy's girl. But my daddy also um, gave me my most disappointment. In what way? My father was on drugs. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. And so he, like, I didn't know because he was like one of those functioning crackheads. As they say, like he worked, he still looked well, but he had an addiction. Okay. And it was, wasn't until I was like 14 that I found out that he had an addiction because I didn't know because we would still hang out. I never saw him do the drugs in front of me. Um, but what I will say about my father is from the moment I found out that he did drugs is the moment that he went sober. And he's been sober for 20 some years now. Wow. And I like I was in the, I slept in the, uh, rehab homes with my father. I went to every AA meeting with my father. I went to every, cause they do like meetings twice a week. They, well, they go right. all day, like every day. But I was literally like, I know his whole foundation. They know me since I was a little girl because I was there like, okay, daddy, you say you want to get sober. I'm going to sleep in this boarding house with you and make sure you're getting sober. Um, I want you to start showing more of that. 
I want to show more. But I know you got to be defensive. Well, yeah, all I don't. this that's going on. Well, all this going on, mm-hmm. it's bring. You know, it makes me have to put on this defense. Now I got to defend my name. I got to defend my job. I got to defend my husband. It's like, when do I get to? She just be me. Yeah, because I'm not that. Yeah. I'm not that really. That's the worst of me. You know what I mean? That's the. Uh, and it's like, girl, I'm. I'm trying to be in peace. I'm yeah. trying to make money, make babies, make happiness. Like I'm so not there. But it's like, okay, you want to bring that out of me? No, I just prefer not to. No. Sunny says she did fight for Destiny to tell her story, but the higher up says she did not have a story. Nothing. Nobody paid for this. Paid for it. Like, I've done this by myself. Yeah. And for someone to try to tarnish my business work relationship just because you feel a way, you know, is to me, it's, it's like going as low as you can go. Yeah. Whether you're mad and you feel a way about me and most, okay, I get it. That is valid to feel a way about that. But to go to the extremes, you were unprofessional. You didn't tell my story. Like, you know you're lying. You know you're lying. <laughs> Period. And I'm saying to you, I'll say it on the reunion, I'll say it to whoever, you know you're lying. Mm. Because I was in those meetings fighting for your story, but they said you had none. Let's be very clear. And they were already like, she's difficult, you know, this, this, that. But I was just like, steady fight. Like, get a girl a chance. You know, I'm in there doing that. As a, for a woman. As for a woman. In the, I'm in there fighting for you. I have no reason not to fight for you. Why would I... I'm coming in fresh as a producer. Why would I not tell your story? Yeah. Destiny got mad at Sonny for booking Melody as well to perform in St. Louis. And then the whole, um, <laughs> just also like the whole, you booked me for this show because you wanted to manage me. Let's let's clear up why the Monica show. Okay, let's talk about that. Because that keeps getting mentioned. I completely forgot about it. It's just so much. Go ahead. <laughs> First of all, I also booked Mel. Okay. So it wasn't just about this one person. It was me seeing how I could help these ladies in their music careers, mm-hmm. right? I'm like, okay, this would be a good opportunity. I could make this yeah. happen for St. Louis. And it's a sold-out show. You know, Monica's a you know successful artist. And I was also creating story. Okay. However, we didn't get to pick that up because we had, had already maxed out our traveling opportunities okay. for that, that season. So it didn't get filmed, but I had been pitching it for a while. What story? I want to. I want to be clear. You say you were creating a story in it. Well, cre- yeah, like I was basically bringing that opportunity for them to open up, oh, right, at, gotcha. on the show and showing them doing their music career, something okay. else besides whatever was going on. Like y'all get to be y'all artists. Okay, here go perform for Monica and gotcha. sold out show. Let's see how the fans react. Mm-hmm. Let's see y'all do y'all thing on TV. Mm-hmm. So that's how I was coming as a producer to create that, and I wanted to bring them to St. Louis. Yeah, that was my goal. Yeah. Bringing the show to St. Louis. That's always been my goal. <laughs> and so that was the thing. And so it was like, oh, you did it for the... I did it because I thought it was a good a good look all the way around. These ladies get to open up. Yeah. It helps their music career. It's it's a good content for the show. And you're doing your damn job. And I'm doing my job because I'm a segment producer. I create story. Am I supposed to just sit back and... I don't know. Like, you can't... Listen... You can't win for losing sometimes for helping people. You sure can okay? because they'll use it as like, it's like, oh, you did it because, well, no, nah, I just did it because, and they're like, oh, wait, you say you paid for things and it shows that you were suffering. No, I had it like that. It ain't no problem. If I can help, I help a stranger out. I buy meals for people. I'll be behind somebody. Somebody be behind me and I pay for their meal. Yeah. That's the type of person I am. And they won't even know. And I just walk out like. That's fine. You can't win for losing you sometimes. Can't. It's like, if I'm kind to you, you're going to weaponize it as you were my friend. You betrayed me. If I don't do shit, I'm an angry black woman. I like, ain't never did nothing to help yeah. me. We so, can't ask for, for to me. have black women at the table if you're going to weaponize their femininity and their kindness against them. And loop them into this this spider web of, now you are, uh, now you are a hell prisoner yeah. to me and only me. And Oh, and then... <laughs> I have to say this because it, it, it goes into some of the things, the red flags that I saw. Okay, I'm a very, I've been through, I can see through a lot of things. You know, I've dealt with so many different kinds of people. I can peep it from, from the jump. I can peep what you on. And I don't fall into webs no more. I did that when I was in high school. Um, But just how she got mad at me. For what? When she found out that I booked me though. And this was like, okay, let's talk. Home. Have you shared this before? Um, what was I don't her know. reaction? 
She wouldn't answer my calls. She was upset. And I'm working like I had just became her producer. It's not like I'm like one month in with her. Damn. And she was like, I ain't talking to her no more. She wouldn't answer my call. She was pissed. And I was like, I was even telling my co-workers like, this girl is really mad at me because she found out. I'm like, I don't owe you that. I like Mel. Like, you know, I was confused because it was giving you my best friend already. And I'm like, girl, this is this is a month in. Like, this is weird. You don't own me. I'm a producer. I, I wasn't your friend that booked you. I was your producer mm. that booked you. Sunny has asked why she thinks Martell is not off the show. He being biased. But just because you knew him first, when do you check him on his stuff and how he handled her? Like as a woman, because for me as a woman, had I been around when I didn't even know about the revenge porn when I was filming. Yeah. I didn't find out that till later, months later through blogs and stuff like that. Had I known about it in that moment, I would have addressed it. I addressed something with him. I hope they show it. You put something out there. They're going to see that. Yeah. So I don't care how hurt you are and how bad you want to hurt somebody else. You got other people to consider. Yeah. This is a move that don't just hurt her. It hurts your children because they're going to see that and say what daddy did to mommy regardless. And even, um, you know, I addressed him before and I was just like, just be accountable for what you did. You worked on other shows before, way before Love and Mirror Tunsville. Yeah. You're not new to this, you're true to this. Yeah. Based on your experience in the television production industry, mm -hmm. why is he still on the show? Probably because he is some type of producer. Oh, interesting. Queen Sheba asked Sunny, did she request to be Destiny's producer? The producer, you are a cast member. In hindsight, knowing what you know now, what you did not know then, would you have ever agreed? Because I heard Destiny say she requested a different producer. She requested me. She re she specifically. Went to, she went to my boss. Mm. And asked for me because I'm, you know, I was, I'm vibrant. I'm cool. I was cool with the cast. Like they all took to me very well because I'm real. You know, I'm not too yeah. TV'd out where I'm just like, just coming in there super fake. I'm giving you realness at the same yeah. time. And so she saw that and she wanted to connect with me. She requested me. I was working with Tiffany. I was just fine with that. Okay. You were working. Okay. That's I was Tiffany's now. producer first. And so they took you from Tiffany. Mm -hmm. and Place. And she wished yeah. us. Oh. She was with the young guy who was my, we came in together. Okay. She was working with Nick first. And um, she was like, I don't think, he just don't get me. He, he, you know, he don't vibe with me. I feel like you real, you vibe with me. You could vibe with me. Okay. And I think um, she really saw that after the, the uh, Galentine's Day event. when they Sunny clears up the type of relationship she had with Destiny. Let's say this. It's not that she and I weren't cool, right? Like, cause I'm a cool type of chick. I if we're cool working, workers. yeah, if we work around each other, I'm going to be cool with you. I'm going to be, we can go out. We can do a lot of things, right? But for me, because I've learned early on, I've been in that boat a long time ago to know that everybody's not my friend. I'm going to be like, she cool. But when I go home, I'm not thinking about you. I'm not talking about you. I'm not telling you my business. Yeah. And I'm glad I never shared anything with this lady because she would have just put it all on the internet yeah. at this point. Yeah. And I've tried my best to just be like, okay, I'm going to let you be mad. Because, I, okay, you got a reason to feel a way, right? Everybody has a valid reason to feel the way they feel. But it is such thing as going overboard. About it. You found love in a situation that did not work out for her. Mm -hmm. However, can we clear it up that you guys had a professional relationship versus being best friends? Absolutely. Um we had a professional relationship. We were getting to know each other in that space, right? Mm -hmm. After the show, we barely spoke. I may have spoke to Destiny two or three times on the phone. Right. There was some text messaging going on because she was like, hey, will you still produce me even if you're not on the show if I get back on? Because her goal was to get back on the show. Okay. And I was like, you know, I'll help you. I'll give you advice. I give anybody sound advice because I just feel like yeah. that's just what you should do, right? Most women do. Yeah, sound advice because yeah. I saw that she needed that and I was giving it like, hey, when Madonna, you need to do this. Like, girl, is that, you know, because I'm just saying, speaking life into a person. It's just what I'm going to do. Um, but I just think that, of course, she felt a way. You know, I think she felt like there could be a friendship there, right? But for me, I just know that 
that's not something I jump in the bed with right. too early on with people. Cause it takes, cause for me, friendship means a lot. Like my friends, I've had my friends 20 years, all my friends. In my, I, I don't have no, I, have I just friends. met you and we're friends. Everybody in my life have known me since I was a child and we have grown up together. And that means something really, really deep for me. That's why I keep saying she wasn't a friend of me because if you are my friend, now you have so much to hold over me. Yeah. Because I owe you now. I feel like I would sacrifice certain things for you. I'd give you the shirt off my back. We can get in the shirt together. I'm going to run to your every beck and knee. That's the type of friend I am. So I take that very seriously. So that's why I have to keep letting people know. Because you're not going to make me seem like I'm a bad friend. Because I can call any one of them on FaceTime right now. They're going to tell you how I was there when their mama died. Yeah. How I was there when their son got murdered. How I helped bury people. How well, I helped Kimmy say these. that you were there for her. I heard Kimmy come. When so. she got cancer, we cried and prayed together. Yeah. I don't got to be your friend and sit here and have to feel a way. We cried and prayed together. I went and got certain things because I'm like, God, you know, I, I'm an empathetic person. Yeah. I felt that. So I'm like, whatever I can do in my power to do, I feel like that's a part of what God want me to do. That's how the type of person you should be. And you're not going to weaponize my kindness neither yeah. to lock me into this contractual friendship when I'm just being me. Yeah. Sonny was asked, why do you think Destiny is struggling with leaving quietly? Let me ask you something. Yeah. Why do you feel like this woman will not leave quietly? Like, I believe in leaving people quietly from mm -hmm. the moment that y'all got married. And that man chose you. Why do you think Destiny's struggling with leaving quietly so that you and Moses could tell your story? Um, honestly, I believe Destiny has so many things going on um, with her emotionally and mentally. Um, she is a broken person, right? She's had so many things in her life that have failed her. Right. And it can go all the way back to her relationships with maybe even her mom. Right. Mm -hmm. There's an animosity there. And sometimes when you don't heal trauma as a child, those childhood traumas that linger. Yeah. They can go over into your adulthood. And now you're you have this misplaced anger. Right. And I just feel like. Either some people just don't develop in that area because it takes a lot of self-work to right. heal. Right. Like I had trauma. I think we all. I Right. We all have a trauma, especially as black people, right? Yeah. We're like given trauma. We have to go through so many hurdles yeah. in life. Um, and these are not digs at Destiny. This is just my observation. Okay. As, and I'm really not biased when I say this about her. Um, I think that she does this with everyone. I don't think it was just a me thing. Mm -hmm. I think she's the type of female that if she has a couple conversations, if she, you guys are cool and kiki, I think that she attaches herself in that way because I think that somewhere along the line she needs that attention she didn't get when you don't get that attention from certain people in your life especially like a mom and things like that it can happen. you look for it outwardly you know and so now every female you try to have an attachment with because you are detached from the one that you needed yeah period and, and you know what even with her going as low as she's going and doing what she's doing, I really hope that she finds the healing that she needs. Because hold, carrying that weight that she's carrying, it takes a lot of energy to, to have that energy for somebody all the time. Yeah. I'm a very forgiving person because I learned very on, early on in my life that if I carry that animosity, that's a weight that's on yeah. me. And I got to be mad every time I see you. And I got to hate. And I got to do this. I don't got time for that, baby. I'm trying to live my life. Trying to get what's out here for me and be yeah. happy. Because misery, it can kill you. And it loves company. And it loves company. And it can yeah. break your mind. Yeah. Being a bitter person. Like, I don't want to be a mad, angry, bitter woman. Black woman. We already yeah. get that rap for being a mad black woman. Those are my top 10 highlights. Let me know what I missed in the comments section. And definitely be sure to watch the full interview over at Queen Sheba. Talk to you later. Bye.